This was a while ago. Um, I was 20, so it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago in March, um, I was not seeing the person. We went on one date, we had sex. Um, yeah, found out I was pregnant, I was like, oops. <laughs> so I was in the Navy, I was 20. I was stationed in Virginia Beach, but at the time I found out I was pregnant, I was in Arizona um, for training and I was staying by myself. Um, so I was alone in this uh, little apartment and uh, it just kind of dawned on me, my period is super late, you know? So I went and got a test and I took it and I was like, oh, it's gonna be negative, it's gonna be negative. And then, you know, it was positive. I was in the apartment that I was staying in for that school in Arizona um, by myself. I thought I had called a few people. I kind of, I didn't know what to do. You know, I, I felt like, um, I felt like linear time had stopped, you know, um, being that young, I think it was like a very earth shattering moment and being in the Navy, it was very confusing. First couple hours, um, first for sure was shock. I was numb. Um, I was looking for everybody else to tell me what to do, I think. And then I felt like, I think determined. So it was like, okay. And I like started costing out diapers, like very quickly it was like, okay, in no way is this like logistically viable for me, you know? And then, and then the emotional surge kind of came like the reality of the situation. So I think I, I went through many stages of the emotions, you know, in that first few hours, but I stayed pretty, it happens pretty internally, you know what I mean? So I, I imagine if you would have seen me though, I would have just spent a few hours like staring at the wall on the couch, you know? <laughs> By the people that I told and were, I told right away, and they were the people that in total probably ever knew. I don't remember the order that I called people, but the first thing I, I remember calling my mother, which we don't have a great relationship, but in those moments, I guess, you know, the instinct, call your mom. Um, and I was expecting like emotional comfort, which I don't know why, because I never got that from her. Um, she, all she said was, do you need money to take care of it? And I thought, oh, like, that's just so, I mean, it, I mean, I knew I'm probably gonna go that way anyway, but it was just such like an unmotherly, like unemotional sort of, I don't know, it kind of hurt my feelings that she wasn't acknowledging like how I was feeling. It was just like solution. I felt very like, what you feel like is, is swept under the rug and I'm an Aries, I'm a very emotional person. So I was like, this is not, this is not the good advice for me. And I was like, I'm fine, <laughs> so I hung up. Um, but then I called, um, my brother and then his perspective was not something I wanted to hear again very cold and emotionless but I did really appreciate his perspective he said because my mom had him when she was 18 we never had our dads around you know he was like we have these cycles in our family and the way to break the cycles is by making different choices than our you know older family has and I was like okay that's true and then I called my best friend and he was like look you know what I don't I, I do not tell people what to do with their life. And he's like, but I just don't think that you should have a baby. And I was like, okay. Um, for a long time, I felt like I didn't make the decision because of that. Obviously now I'm like, I did. Uh, and I'm super grateful that I, regardless of what the impetus was for me in the moment, you know, I don't regret anything, but I did feel like, yeah, I was really disappointed at the lack of comfort um, and sort of the just like emotionless, like get it done of it all. And my mother had told me, um, I don't know why we have this family dynamic, but my godmother is kind of like a second mother to me, like a close aunt, you know? And she just was like, don't, don't tell her about it. Like, it'll be too sad. So it just put all this weird weight and shame and like, the only person who would have been emotionally comforting was not, I don't know. Yeah. Not so much later. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, she's really like just the ideal loving parent in all the classic ways. So no judgment. She, I think I, I heard her kind of 
or I felt her be surprised and like take a moment, you know, to be like, okay. Um, but not because, oh, this is abortion, but because it was like, wow, my little girl has gone through things I didn't know about. You're an adult. It was like all these hard things, you know, I think I never told her about. I told her about all at once. She's a very like, just keep moving forward, put yourself first kind of person, you know? <laughs> um, I think the first, the first thing is that I had to live my own life um, or let me not put it that way, but just enough time had to pass so that I could see what my life was um, and had become, because I think there was this, <sighs> I felt like my regret was almost obligatory only because I had not fully processed the decision for myself. So I spent, you know, that was in a school, the abortion happened while I was in a military school that was preparing me for deployment. So I went, I went from, I, I basically just didn't have a lot of time to process. I think that I drank a lot. Um, for I would say like two years, I relied on alcohol. Um, but then, yeah, but then I got out of the Navy and my life unfolded and I kind of had that, you know, mid twenties, like starting to see who you are. And I realized, okay, 20 year old me didn't have the ability to make these, to emotionally process what needed to be processed to make the decision like holistically for myself. So I trusted, whatever my intuition other voices but yeah but looking back I was like I, I can't I mean I would have a nine-year-old right now every October that's when I would have had the baby I, I'm always like mm -mm, you know <laughs> um so yeah I think I built a life that just feels good um so I was able to look back and reflect and realize that um regardless of the surrounding circumstances it was something I'm grateful for so I am non-binary and I didn't realize this until after I had gotten out of the Navy. But looking back, I realized that a lot of the things that maybe could have been negatively impactful were actually kind of medicinal for me because I didn't grow up with the energy of masculinity around in my family or life. And uh, I never got, like there was never the little boy stimulated in me as I grew up. There was never the teenage boy that got to live, you know? Um, and so the Navy felt like that first time I could be like, oh, I don't have to be a chick, you know? Like, it just felt so free. Um, and that helped me find, you know, the, the, the more masculine energy parts of my personality, the divine masculine qualities. So what I, the way that that sort of influenced me in the abortion was my main thought was, okay, I may not know how I feel, I may not know what to do, but when I joined the Navy, I took an oath that the Navy would come first. And I knew that if I had a baby, that that baby would always come first. And I was like, I can't have two conflicting number ones because one is a legal obligation and then one is a moral obligation. And I'm like, those, those scales will never balance. So um, I think that energy of commitment, discipline, loyalty, like all of those sort of divine masculine energy things they helped comfort the emotional blow that the decision was for me at the time. Um, but that is of course not to say that I had a fully positive experience because of how masculine energy the military was, <laughs> you know, just that caveat, but yeah, no, I did not tell him. Um, couple layers of why I was already in the Navy at this point, but I was in a school environment and he was in a higher ranking person in the admin department of that school. He was married and adultery is, you know, it's an archaic thing, the military. So he can have, he could have lost his career for adultery. But the thing is, is um, in the military, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, lo a lot of times, you know, because of the traveling and the separation, you have people who are legally married, but they haven't been actively with their partner in a really long time. So that always felt like a gray area, you know, you don't, to not want to um, sort of jeopardize someone's career over something that could be completely mundane. Um, but then also, I didn't know if I was going to get in trouble because of the cross rank thing. But also, he had a vasectomy the day after we had had sex, the time that made me pregnant. 
the sort of like head spinningness of that at 20, I was like, oh, I don't know. That feels so heavy to be like, yes, your last swimmer to ever <laughs> do work. You know, it was, it was, it was too much, but then, um, but really it was more like, I just barely knew him. We just went on, he was like, Hey, do you want to go out? I was like, okay, sure. We went out, we had sex. Um, but then I got back from the school after I had the abortion, I saw him um, just on the base, like we crossed paths and, you know, he was such a trigger for me, obviously, um, that I froze and I just kept walking and I ignored him because I didn't know what to do. And then he texted me like the meanest, nastiest sort of like, you know, you flat tittied ho, like, how dare you ignore me? Like, oh, and I was like, oh, well, this is just a blessing. This guy's a piece of shit. So I was just like, he'll never get to know. I can go on with my life not feeling guilty, you know? I made the right choice kind of thing. It, it helped solidify things to realize, you know, I had made a mistake. It made me feel like an unwanted um, energy of power. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just felt very like, I'm not just having an abortion, but like I'm aborting this man's last possible child. Or I guess vasectomy is reversible, I heard recently, but you know, at the time for him then, I guess it just felt like, Oof, this isn't a part of the decision I want to make, you know? It was around a month, maybe three weeks to a month. Um, because in Arizona, well, one, I was in that school. And so I had to get a weekend appointment. And then I found out in the like Sunday. So then I had to, you know, wait till the next weekend to get the appointment. But they have a thing where in Arizona at the time, the law was you had to go. And then two weeks later, you had to go back. They wanted to give you time to change your mind, I think. At the time, I didn't think anything of it because I had no context. You know, I just was like, and I didn't understand like the sociopolitical influences of everything either. Um, I just thought, okay, this is how abortions are. That's what I felt like actually throughout the whole thing, um, really. I was like, well, you know, anything the shitty that happened or anything bad, I was like, well, this is just what it is. But yeah, so it was about three, four weeks and um, I, Man, I held it together. Uh, I was very emotional, but I would go to school in the morning and I would do amazing. And then I would get in the car and that Adele 21 CD head was popular. Uh, and I would just like put it on and, you know, like I think by track eight or something, I'd be home and just like weeping. And then I'd get out of the car, I'd be done crying and, you know, I'd make dinner. And it was, it was a very like, I was young enough that that kind of repression was working. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I felt like it was um, doable at the time, but looking back, I thought if I was in a state that didn't have that, I wouldn't have had to have a surgical abortion. And I could have, you know, taken the pill and done it in the privacy of my own home. The reception, the nurses, um, you know, all the people that I met with for that first appointment, um, and leading and for the second appointment leading up to the actual abortion, they were all very like lovely healthcare professional, you know, energy the way you would want at like a women's clinic or some kind of, um, you know, like sensitive sort of place, uh, very like caring. But the facility, you know, itself was, I think now looking back subpar. Um, Everything was okay. The waiting room was fine. The reception area was fine. But then when it was like beyond where the public saw and it was like where you just waited, um, it felt like 20 years ago. There were like old couches from like, I don't know, it felt like Goodwill. It was strange. And like this old TV that had like a big back on it, you know, like from back in the day, um, playing like Judge Judy or some like daytime TV, you know? Um, and there was just like, seven or eight of us in the room just like wrapped in blankets like staring at each other like we had no idea like what exactly part of the process this was you know um just sort of you know some people were really like reserved like don't fucking talk to me I don't want to be here other people were definitely like relating to each other and socializing you know I was just so used to the navy I was just like very confused but I was open I wasn't you know, I guess like afraid or I didn't feel like a fight or flight like I might have, I think if I wasn't in the Navy. But looking back, it was very strange. And I did see Amanda Palmer's show. She spoke about 
having an experience in abortion clinic that was like that and then leaving and then going to a better one. And I thought, oh, <laughs> 20 year old me did not realize that was an option. <laughs> yeah. Initially I had planned to do all this alone and I had a plan for like a taxi and blah, 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 all this stuff. Um, but when I had gone to the school, I met a guy and we very quickly sort of felt emotional feelings for each other. We started dating. And like anybody who cares about someone going through something, he quickly figured out what was going on with me. And he was like, you are crazy. Like you are not gonna go get an abortion by yourself, you know? So like very last minute before the abortion, he was there um, and I thought I was gonna be alone. So I did have a lot of relief energy um, being there. Um, but also like just such abject fear, like, am I making the right choice? I felt like I didn't have the, whatever I needed, the evidence I needed, the facts, I didn't have everything. It, feel, it felt like that, it felt like I didn't have everything I needed to, to make a good decision. I was like, I'm making this decision because I have to, because it's time sensitive and this is what I'm going to do. But it just felt, I felt very scared that it was the wrong choice, I guess. I don't know if the experience that I had was an accurate representation of how they all are. Um, I did later in life get an IUD um, put in and taken out and it was the worst pain in my life. I was told by my nurse who was there with me, I'm like crying, there, she's holding my hand. Like she said, listen girl, she said, I have had children and she goes, the pain that you're in right now is like with the contraction. She's like, you, you know, and so she's like, you're not being a baby. Like you're in a lot of pain. I was like, okay. So I don't know, maybe my uterus is just like no entry, <laughs> non-binary, like, I don't know. So I will give that caveat. Like, I don't know what it was supposed to go like. Um, but so it was like a gyno visit, except I was completely laying flat and then stirrups and it oh god girl it was so weird there was like wood paneling in this room it did not feel you know sterile or doctory it was very strange it felt yeah so they give you a something that they refer to as a twilight anesthesia which is supposed to make you like out of it and you're still able to walk around but the idea is that afterwards you won't remember anything um and it so it's like you're you're half in, half out. I kind I came to find later in life that I'm very um, immune to anesthesia. It takes I have some gene that like just metabolizes it very quickly. So um, as soon as they started, I, I felt extreme pain. I felt you know okay. I I've given it until the last second to feel like there's anesthesia on my body, and I felt nothing. I was just awake. Um. And then as soon as he started, um, like I just started screaming because the pain was so intense. And I, I, I asked them to stop. And the doctor, the nurse kind of like very like nurturingly, like rubbed my head or something like that, took my hand and was like, it's okay, it'll be over soon. And I was like, you have to stop, something is not right. The doctor, the doctor said, shut her up. She's gonna scare the other girls. So I was like, what the fuck is coming, right? Like, oh my God, like what saw five movie did I find myself in? Um, and then, so I start like trying to get off the table and then and everyone held me down physically while he finished the abortion. Um, and then they have you turn over on the table and then you're laying face down on a table with like a, uh, like a wee wee pad. I don't know what it's called, like for people, you know, underneath you, cause there's bleeding. And um, then they wheel you into a more sterile looking like white medical sort of environment. And it was like, oh, it, I just like, my face was this way and I opened my eyes and it was just rows of all these girls. Like they just one after another, just like parked us there in the beds. And I was a little bit loopy from the anesthesia, you know? So I, it took me like a minute to process, like to start verbalizing things. and. And looking back, I think it was more the trauma than anything else, you know what I mean? Because as soon as I got with the guy that I was dating at the time, back in the car, I was like talking and whatever. Um, but yeah, I looked at the girl next to me and I was like, 
I looked at the other side, there was no one there. And it was just the row this way. And I thought, oh my God, like, this is insanely horrible. Like this doesn't feel, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. So I asked the girl next to me, I was like, are you okay? She was like, yeah, <laughs> I think so. It's like, are, she's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah. And then we just laid there and then the nurse was like, don't get up, you'll bleed everywhere. Like, you know, very like kindergarten during a nap, just like impersonal, like yelling things at us all sort of generic. And then like one by one, like, I guess as everyone was ready, they like ushered people out. They also, now that you mentioned that, I remember, um, I also specifically asked to not see the sonogram or hear the heartbeat. And they were very, um, here is your baby on the monitor. <laughs> like, you know, it was very like red state. <laughs> Their beliefs seemed to be conflicting with the actions. First was the first waiting room. And then there was this sort of back room, kind of like where you, where you'd get blood drawn, like a lab vibe like that, where they gave me some pill. And then I went into the waiting room, then the abortion and then the recovery. The pain was like a bad period, but like an ache instead of like the sharpness of cramps. Um, physically. Um, so, you know, the interesting thing, his name was Nick. He's a really, really nice guy. Um, he, his approach was like, I'm going to love you through this by like helping you repress and deny and just like forget all about it. You know, he was a grown man who had never been in like a long-term relationship before. And I was like this young girl going through like everything at once. Um, so, you know, he, he was well-meaning, but looking back, I was like, wow, that was denial and repression for sure. But at the time it was nice because I had school until five on Friday. And then um, I had the abortion on Saturday and I had Sunday to recover. And then Monday I had to be back in school. So where the abortion was, was about three and a half hours north of where the school was in Phoenix. So he got us a hotel for Saturday to Sunday. And so right after the abortion and looking back, I don't know how I did this. It was just, I think the energy of like, what got me through the Navy up until that point was repressing my emotions. So it was second nature, I think, but he was like, let's go shopping. And he took me to the mall and he bought me a dress. He bought me shoes. He bought me, he went to um, Walgreens like right after and was like, ibuprofen, Advil, Tylenol. He didn't know what to do, you know? Um, and he just kept saying, you know, it's just a weekend with some bullshit. It's just a weekend with some bullshit. So like I straightened my hair. Like I just did everything to be like, to take myself out of the reality, went out to a nice place for dinner. And then I went back to school uh, and then, you know, Monday and I, I pretended like nothing had happened. So that was like the overall, but in the sort of hours after, I would say I felt, I don't mean for this to sound like cliche, but empty. Um, not because the abortion, but because I felt like it was just too much or too the, the, like life-changing decisions, so heavy, so quick that I was so ill-equipped for. And I just kept cycling around this feeling that I made it. I made, I made my decisions because I had to go to school on Monday because I couldn't get pregnant and not go into appointment, you know? And it wasn't like I really felt solidified. So but yeah, definitely just over uh, veiled with uh, denial. <laughs> and then that led quickly to drinking, yeah. <laughs> Never talked about it again, except not with my mom, not with my brother, but with my best friend, yes. He was like my present day best friend. I went back from the school to him, you know. Changing who I opened up to about the abortion, you know, realizing that I needed to talk to people about it who were more like in your energy, you know? Um, I think unrelated, but related. I think that when I did stop drinking, I just got so, so, so drunk one New Year's Eve. You know, I woke up the next morning and was like, yikes. <laughs> I don't want to feel like this. Uh, 
I think that in doing that, and then I just didn't drink for two years after that. So I think that that two years of sobriety really, and I didn't smoke weed either. So that just helped me emotionally mature. So I think it all kind of came full circle with when I stopped drinking, I guess. But that wasn't an in general sense, but like really, truly like, you know, feeling not regretful, like just very at peace with the decision. Um, that was actually just through, you know, Viva, or thank God for abortion. Um, Cause it was like all of a sudden this script flipped and it was like, no, I have power. Like, no, I, I, I just did something really beautiful, loving for myself. There's no need for shame. There's no need for regret. Like it removed any lingering feelings of, of shame that I had. And instead I just felt really prideful. Like it allowed me to look back and go, damn, but you were 20. <laughs> like you were 20 and you did that. Like, who were you? Cause I, I don't know that I could do that now at 30. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah. So I would say a little emotional maturity, a little thank God for abortion. <laughs> I did replace my drinking with um, a codependent relationship. Looking back, I realized I was married for five years to a woman. Um, yeah, and I wondered, like, why was I so good at not smoking weed and not drinking and not distracting myself? It's like, oh, because your whole fucking life was a distraction. <laughs> so I, I, the way I see it is that I just, like, here I was with a million distractions because I had zero way to feel my feelings, process them. But then, you know, I removed one, there's still a bunch, I moved another, there's still a bunch. So now I feel like I'm, like you said, in that place where there's nowhere to hide, but there's still some ways I can hide.